Hello, welcome to another History Behind the Games episode. Today we will be rating the PC game War of Rights, its gameplay and historical accuracy and influences. Please like and sub the video if you can, and I won't hunt you down. <laughs> as these are free and easy ways to support the channel. If you really like my videos, however, you can also check out my Patreon page. And lastly, if you are feeling curious, check out my other channels for more gameplay and educational content. Thank you. War of Rights is an early access game developed and published by Campfire Games. It is set in the American Civil War during the 1862 Maryland Campaign. It is a first-person shooter with only PvP matches, at least so far, with no story campaign. Once you join a match, you are given a small description of the fight you'll be in. Often you are not fighting a whole battle, as an RTS game would have you do, but you are soldiers engaged in a smaller action during the large battle. The objective of the match is not to get more kills than the enemy, or wear down their battle tickets, or anything like that. The goal is to dominate an objective point, an area of strategic importance marked out on the map. The game does not record your kills or give you experience points to rank up. The only way to win a match and the only thing that is important is to take those strategic points and break your enemy's morale. Morale, or the fighting spirit of an army, is incredibly important in the game. Remember that for later. All weapons and gear are attached to the rank you select at the beginning of the match. You can switch, but there are limited slots available for certain ranks, such as officers or standard bearers. It is a type of game where each player must fulfill the role they have chosen. In fact, there is no running around the map and being a lone wolf. I mean, you can, but it will have drastic consequences for your team. Remember that thing about morale being important? Well, you see, officers often give orders to their troops and tell them where to line up, etc. If a soldier dies out of line, as the game calls it, that is, not in the place where the officer ordered them to be, standing shoulder to shoulder with their comrades, morale is severely penalized for your team. And remember, if your morale breaks, your team loses. If you are close to the line but not quite there, or are kneeling when you get shot, your death might get counted as skirmishing. There is still a penalty for morale, but it is not as high as being out of line. The best death you can expect is being in line, or standing shoulder to shoulder with your teammates where your officer told you to be. Morale penalty in this case is very low. So to win, it is necessary to fall in line and listen to your officers and hope they know what they're doing. Often the enemy or your team fully breaks down in morale and the game is over. There is a time limit, but I have never played a match that ended with the time running out. Weapon handling is cumbersome, and take some getting used to with the rifle shaking and the weight differences in having bayonets attached or not, or trying to aim immediately after sprinting, etc. There is usually just one active respawn point for each team, but this can be augmented by your unit's flag bearer, who soldiers can spawn on, but only if the flag is being held. So if the flag goes down, somebody needs to grab it, or temporarily lose out on having reinforcements spawn next to you rather than half the map away. The last thing I'll talk about gameplay is the player base itself. It is by no means huge, but the game has been out for a while and there are a substantial group of dedicated players. I've never waited too long to find a server that had a dozen or more players in it. Some players may make unsavory comments and offensive remarks in general or to other players, but I find that if you keep talking about tactics, you'll be fine. Plus, I believe the speech feature only exists for those standing next to you. So if there is a toxic player in the match and they do get killed, you needn't worry about hearing from them until they get back in line. But this is a small issue. Mostly, I found the player base to be really into history and trying to use tactics and orders from the time period and trying to say them in the 19th century style. It is a must to listen to your officers and work as a team rather than trying to achieve individual glory. Most players just expect you to fall in line to try to win the match and I can't complain with that. The one thing I would suggest for improvement is perhaps having some player rank up system, because players like to see those little achievements and it might help more players join the game. Not for any gameplay advantages, however, as this could discourage new players from joining, but maybe cosmetic items, such as a different hat, a knapsack sling, or some other items that are historically accurate. 
I know that if you go down that road, there is the temptation to reward players in non-historically accurate gear, and perhaps it's something that the developers already discussed and didn't want to do, but I am just suggesting it. Another suggestion would be bots, since numbers are never that great in the servers. Perhaps trying out bots to fill out the remaining slots may help the game feel more immersive. The old Mountain Blade Napoleonic DLC still currently has servers where players can be helped by or fight against bots. Bot options may really fill up the maps that might otherwise be extremely beautiful. Worf writes as some of the most gorgeous match environments I've ever seen in the game, but empty. Making players spend most of their time running halfway across the map to get to where the action is, just to die and do it over again. Don't get me wrong, I'm not badmouthing the game, but merely suggesting improvements. When battle is joined, I find myself getting super focused and trying to follow the orders while trying not to get killed, and ultimately just trying to win the match. Whenever I've played, I've always had a lot of fun, so I give the gameplay a rank 3. So we know how to play the game, but how historically accurate is it? Well, it's pretty dang accurate for the most part. The forcing you into battle formations, the detail of the actual particular regiments participating in the battles, the uniforms for each unit and individual, and even the regimental flags are all accurate. Between matches, players are given historical details of the match they are about to join, sort of like the old Battlefield 1 game would do, but War of Rights gives a lot more detail. Since the game doesn't have a campaign, there is no way to say that they got this character or this general wrong or this needs work or something like that. Even the training area, known as the drill camp, is set up in a way a regiment would have had it. Except for maybe firing your ranges, but that's more for gameplay practice. The gameplay is set up to make sure that players use the tactics and organization of the time period and penalizes you if you don't. When you're marching and you hear that rebel yell in the distance as both armies meet, it is a thrilling experience. Your guns let out quite a bit of smoke, which lingers for a bit, and reload times are usually around 15 to 20 seconds, an accurate time for most of the muskets and rifles being used. Maps are first recorded and superimposed from old Battlefield sketches, and then recreated in the game. As mentioned in the gameplay, we're not fighting the entire battle, but only taking action in different parts of the battlefield, such as Burnside's Bridge at the Battle of Antietam. So I give for the historical rank a 5. It isn't a run-and-gun style game, neither is it real-time strategy. It places you into the battle, firsthand. It may be for a niche audience and may never gain the numbers of a Call of Duty or Battlefield, but it is a mostly accurate Civil War first-person shooter experience. I haven't seen one of those in a while, and none were as good as this one. Check it out for yourself on Steam if you want to, and in the meantime, I'll continue checking the historical accuracy of many other games to come. Thank you for watching. I'm Eric the Lone Pine Wolfman, and remember, never stop learning.